Mass Effect Legendary Edition comes out this week, and I, I've been chipping away at it quite a bit, and I've been really enjoying it. I love Mass Effect, and I think this is a good way to replay it, especially for me, uh, considering I, I love the series, but I spent so much time in each one, and then I never really went back and replayed them, except for when two re-released on PS3. That was, that was really it for me. So jumping back in with this has been pretty good, because from what I've been able to see so far, they have put a good amount of work into it. The visuals are completely overhauled, and the game for the most part looks really gorgeous. It runs at shockingly high frame rates, HDR, it's got way more realistic lighting, volumetric effects, uh, the whole nine yards, stuff you would expect without a complete overhaul, but textures are a little sharper, characters are overhauled, some areas, especially Mass Effect 1, are just a little bit more vibrant, have a little bit more activity to them and stuff like that. There are some like artistic and slightly weird different things that I, I think are gonna turn some people off if you're really specific. I think there's kind of more of a unified color palette this time around, which I do like. It's very vibrant, but I think the first game and certain areas throughout uh, kind of lose some of that same vibe that they used to have, but I think that's more of an artistic choice uh, and also the new and improved lighting, uh, which also means that some characters look a little bit different. It has a similar effect to some of those Assassin's Creed remasters, like Assassin's Creed 3 Remastered had issues with the lighting where the new lighting just kind of illuminated the characters' faces in ways that they weren't intended to be done in the first place. This has a little bit of that. Some of the faces look kind of weird, especially uh, with some weird eyeball things where a lot of characters look like their eyeballs are bugging out. I, I think people are really gonna meme it. But besides little things here and there and little hiccups like that, I have been really enjoying it, uh, especially playing through the first one. Now the first one probably took the most work to kind of get a bit modern and, and make it enjoyable, and I commend Bioware for that, but it still shows some cracks. Uh, you know, the third person and shooting gameplay. Still a little iffy there. The cover system is still kind of whack. They said they've improved the AI, but I haven't really noticed it at all. But it is a little bit more responsive and it does look better. They've also done some balancing things and some class things, uh, like they, they tweaked the way classes work in Mass Effect 1 and I think it makes a little bit more sense uh, coupled with uh, playing the next games back to back with it. They didn't make Mass Effect 1 feel exactly like 2 and 3. They couldn't really completely do that, but it's a little better because Mass Effect 1 definitely probably aged the worst. Uh, the big thing I think is the Mako, it feels better, the shooting is better, it's a bit more responsive, it's got a better boost this time around. It's still a goofy McFloaty boy, it's, it's still a little messy, but it does feel a little bit more substantial, it's got a little bit more hoofed to it. Hoofed? Heft? Wait, I don't know. But what I've also appreciated playing is the sound, just improved all around, uh, kind of remastered. Playing with headphones has been quite an experience. And so far, I'm pretty happy with this package. It's like you fire it up, and then you kind of have a splash screen that lets you jump into one of the three games, and then when you jump into that game from there, then it's the regular game menu, the Mass Effect 1 menu, or 2 menu, or 3 menu, what have you. There's a lot of little optimizations and tweaks to discover throughout. Uh, Bioware has talked about them already quite a bit, uh, but like even the fact that all the DLC, or most of it, is a little bit more organically unified into the game's structures is pretty cool. And like I said, so far I've just really been enjoying uh, re-experiencing these games in, in 4K for a very specific reason. Like I said at the start, I love the hell out of them. So if you can't tell, what I like to do here is talk about stuff I love, and I go on record about so many games and movies, I've, I've never really talked in depth about the Mass Effect series. Uh, so here's the deal, man. Mass Effect 2 is my favorite, and it's been great to see it here looking way better, because it also looked damn good back in the day. But Mass Effect 2 is my favorite just because it's kind of like the dark middle chapter, you know, it's got a little bit of an Empire Strikes Back type of thing. I say dark middle chapter, but I really, if you think about it, Mass Effect 3 is the darkest because like, you know, humanity is at stake. But uh, no, Mass Effect 2 really has a lot of that like seedy underbelly stuff, uh, the, the renegade decisions or the bad choices you can make in that game, I think are the most tantalizing and the most badass. I like a lot of the characters that they establish in that one. And you know, it's got the weird stuff like the elusive man, like that stuff is really iconic. And I think that 2 is where the series really came into its own. It kind of pulled an Assassin's Creed 2, where Assassin's Creed 1 was like, all right, pretty cool, rough around the edges, and then 2 took the concept and ran with it and made it into what we all really love today, or, or don't love, depending on 
if you like where the series went. But like I said, three is also pretty dark, but also really damn good. By that point, they figured out the gameplay the most. It's a little bit less RPG feely, but still very much you have the decisions. Uh, everything is affected by your choices, uh, except kind of ah, the ending thing. There was a big controversy around the way the game ended back in the day. I wasn't really on that team. It didn't really bother me all that much, but uh, Bioware has, you know, uh, messed with that. That's like, I don't even want to get into this. I didn't hate the ending. I like some of the explorations uh, with, with what Bioware chose to do uh, post-launch, uh, but overall, whatever. It was really, for me, the journey, not the destination. Uh, and that's even with Mass Effect 1, which I still think is kind of underrated. I think people really dunk on it, uh, but now it's kind of getting a second chance with this collection, and it's still rough, but... Getting introduced to this world is so exciting. The first game has this like moody, weird atmosphere to it and a lot of lens flare uh, that just made it feel so unique back in the day and, and it still really holds up today. And that one was the one that was still really trying to be like full on RPG. I mean, they all are, but this is the one where it, it took some DNA from previous Bioware games and a, and a lot of their vibe. Made something interesting with it, uh, with a really cool character uh, that you could either create or have a preset character and make lots of decisions along the way. And I, I love these games because they have the morality system, the Paragon Renegade system. Them, uh, which is something that we see in games less and less. So I cherish any game that has it. And to have like a new remastered 4K Mass Effect where you can experience that again, it's so worth it. Being a badass space pirate or a commander hero Buzz Lightyear character is so fulfilling down to obviously like what you affect in the game world and the story, but also just the fact that there's a little bar that shows how evil you are or how good you are. That goes a long way for me. I, I love that shit. Oh, one thing I did want to mention about the Legendary Edition is that now there's a unified character creator. So it's kind of like they give you all the same uh, presets and sliders and hairstyles and everything uh, consistent for each game. So when you create a character for one, it carries all the way over to three uh, in the same good look. And I think that's really important because that's another thing that is one of my favorite things about the Mass Effect series. A lot of people just created the female Shepard who was badass uh, or, the, or the, the male Shepard who is really cool looking. Um, but for me, what always really made Mass Effect special and why I was hooked after I finished the first one was creating a character that vaguely looked like me. I, I, I really love and respect people that like to just make some weird character and disappear. Uh, but I like to just, I, I like to Leo meme point at the screen and be like, that's me. Uh, so I always make a character that vaguely looks like me and uh, to go along this space adventure with like cool Star Wars Buzz Lightyear hero Jake who like kind of looks like me but also kind of looks way stupider. Still, you can't help but get attached to that character and, and get even more absorbed in that universe. And, and by the end of Mass Effect 1 with the big over-the-top showdown, which I, I think is still incredible for a game from when that released, uh, but to see your character, you, climb out of the wreckage, climb out of the rubble uh, with that incredible music. It's so satisfying. And then to carry, to carry that character along for two more games is, is just so unlike any experience we've had in, in big AAA games in, in quite a while. It's still an RPG thing in a lot of ways, but something like this, very special, very specific moment of time, and I'm, and I'm happy it's like repackaged here for that. If you ask me like, why should I play Mass Effect? For me, it's it's the big three things. Uh, it's, number one, it's the characters. Your crew members are so memorable. They really ramp it up in two and three, but uh, the characters you roll with are dope, and it's fun to get to know them and lead them into battle, and, and you really develop things with them and, and their stories are fleshed out. Uh, number two, is just the world building. Uh, what they've created here, these planets, these galaxies, these enemies, uh, these civilizations, cultures, the alien races, the alien races especially are all so unique and so interesting and have their own types of like personality traits. And you can really start to kind of understand each alien race, where they came from, what their culture is about, why this individual character from that alien race is distinct like this. That stuff gives you the real sense of like exploring space, learning about space, like you're just this little passenger jumping into a whole new wide world. I know that sounds like so corny, but for real. And then the third thing I think is, like I kind of touched upon earlier, the tough decisions. There's a lot of big stuff that goes down in these games in terms of like who you choose to side with, uh, which allies you leave behind, which you screw over, which you have sex with, <laughs> to bigger picture things like, uh, will you commit genocide or will you not enable that? Like, will you save the world this way? It, there's so much to it that 
that just makes it such an immense experience and, and I can't emphasize this enough like if you've never played these games you have a lot of game in front of you but all of it is really good and you're going to learn a shit ton and just fall in love with this whole universe that Bioware created this is peak Bioware I mean it was it feels like maybe now this is like just them throwing us a little something again I haven't seen all of it and there are little quirks here and there uh, but so far playing these games at a, at a ass kick frame rate and uh, resolution and HDR has been good. Also, one last thing, uh, it does have a photo mode and I just wanna take the, this little humble platform I have here to just say, give every game a photo mode. Photo mode is the best thing ever. I'm not even that creative. I'm not even the biggest like in-game photographer type person. There's great communities out there online, but I still think it's such a good thing to have, especially now to revisit the Mass Effect galaxy and pose your favorite characters and like take cool photos, come on. So again, this isn't like a critical review of the Mass Effect Legendary Edition or anything like that. I, I just really wanted to take the opportunity for a second to gush about Mass Effect, why I love it so much. It was a really special time for gaming in general when these were rolling out and I'm happy I've played them all. If you're jumping into the Legendary Edition, I, I wanna know what you think, especially if it's your first time and you're really excited. Uh, if you're a series veteran, I wanna know what you think of this collection if you jumped into it immediately, or uh, also just like, you know, what's your favorite thing about Mass Effect? If you can pinpoint one moment, one character, one thing about Mass Effect that encapsulates why you love it, I would really wanna hear that. I, that, that is like the probably the best thing you could share in the comments besides just, I hate Anthem, so therefore everything sucks. Okay, we get it, but that aside, I'm gonna keep playing through it. I am taking my time with these sweet babies. Let me tell you, this is like a fine wine. So if you like what I'm doing here, just talking about stuff I, I love, I really enjoy doing it. Clicking the like button's all you gotta do to help me out. I would really appreciate that. But guys, thanks for watching. I'm Jake Baldino. You can subscribe because video games.